Hello, I'm Norman Merrow from the Pinery Park Wood Carvers. Welcome to Whittling Time. We have in Western Michigan a very active community of wood carvers. And Pinery Park Club has approximately 40 members, which is extremely good for a senior citizen facility. What I'd like to do today is to show you how to get started in wood carving. And there's some things here I'd like to show you and what a beginner would probably start out with and what to look for in his quest to become a wood carver. First, I wanna show you, uh, well, let's start with some tools. This is a, actually, all you need basic is a starter set and tools. Here's a pocket knife, which is a lot and a lot of carving has been done strictly with a pocket knife. And these are basically a knife, a carver's knife, and these are some tools that you would need probably to do some different cuts in your quest as you go along for carving. This particular is a V tool that cuts a groove or a V like you have, which is shown here, the type of cut it makes. This is a, what they call a U gouge. This makes this type of cut. This is a knife, which will take a flat cut or a little chisel like cut. This is a slant chisel type cut to different type of tools and this is a smaller u-gouge. This is a basically a starter set that you can use to get started and this whole thing you can buy, not included that pocket knife of course, but the other rest of the tools you can get into wood carving basically with about $50, $50 invested, which is a nominal amount to do and start a hobby with. But that's what you would use for that particular purpose. And Along with that, you would have to have yourself a stone, a sharpening stone to sharpen your knives with, basically. And this is a very smooth stone, and that's what you need to put a real fine edge on, on your stones, on your tools. So you can buy these basically at a hardware, but what you want is a very, very smooth type of stone. Now, the books that we use or you can use. They're designed basically for handbook for wood carvers and whittling. You can buy books like this any place and any place carving store or whatever. And basically what that book will do for you is show you items that you can start into whittling, how to start and so forth. And it's detailed patterns. Here is a bigger book that you can start out which is also descriptive of the wood whittler as he starts. And as you can notice, as you go through this book, there's all kind of little odds and ends that you can work with because there's just different things that you can do. It's the characters from one type of whittling to other types. This is the type of thing that you can end up with. And we have more books to show you as we go along here and to what you can end up using. Now, to get started, this is kind of a unique little arrangement here. A lady that's got started wood carving, which I know, started and carved these. And I decided I'd like to have them and I bought them from her. Only because it's just what it indicates. It's a bunch of little hound dogs, young ones and old ones, with a raccoon up a little stump. That's just an idea. You get these ideas and you want to put them together, that's basically what goes, what goes into it. Then, of course, other things you decide that you might want to work with. We have a little rooster. There's a little cutout, which is a little kind of like a crane. Christmas tree ornaments that you can carve like this. Man in the moon, Santa Claus. Then you can even work on shoes, Dutch shoes. This is basically a little what to call a rough out or cut out, which you can continue to carve and you're going to come up with little stuff like this. There's a little mountain man, a little guy, a kind of a guy that's strictly a pocket knife type of thing that you can do with pocket knives. Mm -hmm. This little particular little guy right here, which I imagine the idea came from this particular book, Animal Caricature Carving. And uh, if you open this type of book, book up, these are all aids and helpful tools that help you get into the deal of carving and 
whatever you choose, it can be birds, it can be animals, it can be people, but basically that is what you're up to when you pick up a book, you can learn, teach yourself, find out exactly how you'd like to go about it. Now, as you go along, as you carve, <laughs> here's a neat little item. <laughs> this is a bottle stopper. Not a bottle, it's a bottle stopper, but it, what it is, is somebody, it looks like he's directing or reading or making a speech from a little piece of notes that he has. But as you pull down this little deal, he raises his glasses up, spectacles up. It's a bottle stopper. Like if you want to put in a soda bottle or whatever, basically a lot of people just put them in and stand them up just to look at them because they're automated. <laughs> this is a little nether character carving. I did this, I started this, sing at a music festival. I sat down there and listened to the music. I was there for about three days and I was just decided about the second or third day I needed something to do, so I picked up a piece of wood and started whittling on it. This is a little bit of character carving. It's not finished, but I mean, it's something that you, just to show you that you can entertain yourself with your own whittling and knife work. This is a piece that is a finished piece, more or less, a little character. Actually looks like a little leprechaun. Now to do this particular piece, you start with a piece of wood, a square piece of wood, and if you have a pattern, you lay out the pattern, and you bandsaw this out, or saw it out with a coping saw or whatever you have, both front and back, because that's what you're gonna need when you look at the metal. Then if you turn it sideways, or backwards, or forwards, then you see what your shape's gonna have to be on the side. So you bandsaw the side out, bring it down to a particular, get your proportions where your shoulders and head are supposed to be, and then you're gonna work with that, and uh, you end up with this. So that's basically cutting from a rough out. Show you some books that are available at uh, various bookstores, like Woodcraft, and any place like that to go into hobbies and such. And basically these books, just like this book, it says carving, figure, characters in the Ozark style. Well, this book, it shows you different pictures of what you might be interested in or what you might want to carve. And you go through book after book like this. For instance, here's a, they have layout patterns. Pattern how you can carve that particular little mule that I showed you a little bit ago or something like that. And as you go through these, you find these patterns. And it, it makes a good thing to start with. Get yourself a book and work with it. Now here's a guy on a horse, which is decent. <laughs> that is like figure, this is an old sea captain. If you want to do an old sea captain. And inside is the same situation. Directions as to how to start, how to finish, how to take it all the way through. Even the painting instructions is involved in these books. Tells you how to go ahead and do that. So that's, an, here's one of the car, character, carving car, country characters. A lot of people like character carving because you can make a little mistake on it and it's, it's forgivable. And also, Character carving, it's hard to look at a character without laughing. They're comical, they're funny. And there's some very, very interesting ones that are that way. So if you notice, you can put little groups together. It's, what, what, it's your choice, what you wanna do. But then again, you don't have to go too far away from the tools I've explained. You can do this without a lot of tools and basically a lot of, a lot of as I've said, the people that's carved these back in the hills down in the Ozarks and the, and the Appalachians and places like this, they carved with a pocket knife. They didn't have forty, fifty, sixty dollars for a particular tool. Here's one on uh, Western carving characters. Into the character mood, you can just do anything. Basically, create your own idea, create your own style. They don't have to be in, in 
proportion. They're just literally get the effect in the, that you like in the stance, the figure, the face, the beard, the hair, anything. As a matter of fact, there's a little bow-legged <laughs> country cowgirl, which is kind of funny. As I said, you can't hardly look at these things without getting, getting kind, of a, kind of a kick out of them. And, it, and again, it tells you detail how to get started. Cow, horses, cowboys, <laughs> western figures. But that's what you can end up with. Aids that will help you get started in books. There is other types. What I said about creating character carvings, and they're funny. You have your own ideas when you do one. This was done by a member of our club who is, sadly to say, is deceased, Ken Dykstra. And his ideas was absolutely off the wall sometimes. He created real fa fancy ones at where he had a lot of story been to them. And as a matter of fact, he carved one that I noticed that fishermen running along the river, Mount Stream. He had his waders on, a bear had his claws hooked in the back of the waders. <laughs> and looked real funny. And the hook fish was up over the man's back and the bear was pulling on the man's waders and trying to get to the fish. That was one of my favorites that he did, besides other ones. But that one I thought was really funny and took a little bit of design and a character as I said, can be very, very funny. And they can be off the cuff thinking and do what you want to do with them. But I, I kind of thought this was kind of a unique one that he did, and I ended up with this one, which made it kind of nice that I have one of Ken's carvings. I want to show you some of the tools that basically you can end up with and go a little farther with your wood carving. There's, oh, there's different type of tools. There's knives of different shapes. And as a matter of fact, why don't I just lay out a few of these here and let you take a look at the palm tools. That they, each one of these have a different purpose. They're little V tools, gouges, as I've explained to you, of different type of tools. And as you notice, I have quite a little bunch of the small ones because I do like the, the small tools when you work on small stuff like, like, like that. And they even come handy when you do extremely detailed work, like on larger carvings. This is a type of knife. You probably will never own one of those, but because the gentleman that made those no longer makes them. But that's one a close friend of mine, and I have his, one of his knives here. And uh, this is another knife which he made. This is made for more like, like chip carving. Now, since I'm talking about chip carving, I'm going to go in here and grab a chip carving book up to show it to you. And this is like a pattern type that you would do. Now, you have three or four or five knives and tools that you'd use to basically go into this of different shapes and sizes. And this one here happens to have the blade that you would use for cutting a lot of your deep V's and such in, where you cut down in the corners and stop cut and stop, and that's what that one's basically is designed for. And when you look at a chip carving type of thing, this is a little bit of a different way to go to carve. You lay your patterns out on a piece of wood, and you can carve any type of pattern basic that you want to. A lot of people carve like tops and jewelry boxes. They'll, they'll make plates out of them, hang on the wall. Any design you'd like to create if it's on an object that you want to do. And uh, that's chip carving is a whole different field, but it's also a very rewarding field because you can make a product and it looks good when you're finished with it. It's got the detail and everything that's involved with it. There is another type, there's another type of carving which is called relief carving. You take more or less a flat piece of wood, a flat board or a flat surface, and you carve it like a picture in it. This, if you start out with a piece of plank of wood, say about an inch or two inches thick, you lay your pattern out that you want to carve like a scene. It can be a, it can be a mountain scene. It can be a building. It can be a bridge. It can be anything that you'd want to carve in that. And then you would carve it, uh, carve it 
into the wood and come out with, actually when you're done with it, you're going to come out with almost a picture that you can hang on the wall and give you an idea of this. Here's a nice colored picture of some stuff that you can hang on the wall with it. There's a whole new field of carving. It's not new, but I mean it's a different field than what I've been explaining, like the whittling type. This is almost like a, almost like a photograph. You can, you can paint these things and hang them up and uh, they're kind of really kind of nice. Here's another picture. I'll show you the back of the book. That's a little different. The lady that I explained to you a little while ago that did the little bunch of hounds around the tree of the raccoon, she got into this and she was doing birds like bowls hanging and like a free a bird setting inside of a bowl on a tree limb. Turned out absolutely great. She got really good at it. Then there's, you carve in driftwood. You find wood along the seashore, any place. Lake fronts. You pick up a piece of wood and you carve a face in it. What they call wood spirits, basically, is what they refer to it as. Here's to give you an idea right there on that page. It's really kind of nice. But it's, it's where your interest in this type of carving will take you, what you want to do. They carve these in bark, like tree bark. All to, anything that you choose to work with. We're talking about driftwood. This is wood that you find. It's, it's, it's like what they call carving weathered wood. If you can find these tree stumps, you can find anything that you, basically you look at it, you want to put a carve in. It's, calling, it's car, carved weathering wood, but it's what you find out there that's been laying in the woods or laying in the stream or laying anywhere you want to go. What, you can find it. You pick it up and if you want to carve a face in it, an animal or something, you can do that. And weathered wood is a natural. You don't even have to do much painting on it at all. You just leave it basically as you carve it. But that'll give you an idea of what you can do with, as you advance in carving, go a little farther along with it. That's what you'd end up, you can end up doing. We talk about rough outs, for instance where you can buy basically items that you can carve from rough outs. You can buy these rough outs that there's people that have them just like this particular gentleman, Moore's Rough Outs catalog. This takes away a lot of the wood and it also installs a lot of the proportions for you. So if you want to just, instead of taking a block of wood, you want to buy one of these and you can work from one of those. Continuing along with your carving from rough outs, this happens to be a book of Stu Martin who sells, makes and sells rough outs and he has many, many different types that you could start from his collection and work with, which gives you a good uh, base to start to learn a lot of cutting features with. So this is what you're uh, further along, you can use something like this. Now, this is a rough out which has not been carved yet. It's actually an old sea captain. It has a pipe in his mouth, and that's what you would end up starting with with a rough out and to work toward the finish of it. This was a rough out, which is a riverboat gambler. That is what you would finish up out of that particular rough out. And this is the start and the finish of a pair of rough outs. This is the finished product, and this is the rough out which you would start with. So basically that gives you an idea, again, what you can do to simplify things for you, just to start carving and, and working along with the rough outs down at Branson, Missouri, and Silver Dollar City. Every March I go down there for seminars. I go with one of these gentlemen or ladies down here that do carving, and we'll do a project. And this happens to be a project I did with Vicki Branson, who is well known in the area. Her husband Rex, and she and Rex make their living, living carving. And this happens to be a, a mountain man bust, which I picked up a piece of butter that I liked down there real well, and I started it and uh, finished it up. And it didn't like the finished 
not fit to do something on the back of it. So what I did is I put some pine trees in here, carved out a log cabin, a few more pine trees, is, is food cache, a little container for his cave for his food. You can even notice that real close. You can see the sun coming up over the cabin. But you can take this carving to any level that you want to do it. And uh, I have worked with different people like the gentleman that started me, Fred Carrington, was a uh, gentleman in a wheelchair. When I started back with him, it was been about 10, 12 years ago. Fred, I met Fred down at Branson, Missouri. I met him at the, uh, what to call the uh, Engler's Wood Carvers. And as Fred was uh, sitting there carving, my wife and I got talking to Fred, and Fred kind of got my wife talked into getting me started wood carving. So she sold, he sold my wife a set of tools, and since then I've been on my way, and I've taken about four or five seminars with Fred. And as I said, he's in a wheelchair, and he's also a master carver. His work sells for anywhere from for a few dollars all the way up to many thousands of dollars when he fixes a piece. If he'd have done this piece, put it out, with his name on it, he would probably have ended up with probably getting a couple grand out of it. Just one piece of wood there. That, and there's a lot of these people down there have quite a bit of stuff that's that good and better, of course, and they get that much or more, more, than, more than that for it. But as I said, I've taken classes from a seminar that's held down in Branson every year, and uh, guys like Gerald Copeland, uh, Janet Cordell, Fred Carrington, Vicki Branson, Rex Branson. Those are what you call very, very good carvers. But my theory is this, you don't learn nothing unless you go to somebody that knows more than you do. So by going there and taking a seminar or classes with them, you end up learning faster than you do if you try to do it all on your own. Now, when you go into stuff like this, here's a couple of which is what they call, Jack Ham puts these books out. How to Draw Animals by Jack Ham, and then it says Drawing the Head and Figure by Jack Ham. And these di diagrams and drawings that he has in there are very down to detail. And these two books, which Fred Carrington said, these are his Bibles, because you can get all the expressions, you can get the size of, of the face, the uh, different proportions. Just for instance, when you lay out a face, look at these proportions they use here, just square it off just all different ways, and you position the eyes and the nose, the ears, and that's why these books are, are very, very helpful to anybody that was wants, to, wants to do it. To carve. If you notice this, there's a whole face, but you can carve that with, with a little bit of effort and experience. You can come up and carve out what you want to in a face. You get the expression in it and so forth. But basically these books are, are what you really, really should have if you want to go into more of the detailed carvings, the finer carvings. Same thing with the animals. proportions, design, layout. And that's why these books are very, very valuable to anybody that wants to carve animals or carve figures. To go into books like that, you have carving the female face. If you want to carve, it tells you how to lay it out, how to do it, how to carve ears, helpful. Carving heads and faces. So all kind of instruction you can actually end up act, act, getting. And then of course there is the one that you, here's an old book, it's made by Fritz Schneider, An, Ad, an Atlas of Anatomy for the Artist, which you can use it as a carving because to carve figures, there's one thing about carving a figure, you got to know where the muscles run underneath the skin. 
because as you change your arm or arm position or anything, it changes this whole pattern of muscle flow. So if you're gonna put a garment, anything like especially a tight garment or a sleeve, you gotta know where the muscles are underneath it. And when you do that, then the folds and the sleeves and your shirt and everything comes, comes, comes into play because they all are different. And you get the book like this, which is an old book, but it's available. It tells you from start to finish, it's a human anatomy book with and without the muscles. So you, it's just amazing what you, what you can get out of a book if you start to do carve something as to what you need to know to make the carving more, more perfect. And that's when I say when you've got these guys that are very good at this, when they start selling carvings for about five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, these are necessary in order to get that carving proportioned right, the uh, figure and everything done the way it's supposed to be. What I want to show you now is what I am working on at this time. I got this idea, North and South, Rebel Soldier, Southern Rebel Soldier, but supposed to turn out looking like brothers. I think I got a start on them. Hopefully they'll look like brothers you know, with Lincoln in between. I want to put that together just as a kind of a display. Hopefully that it'll turn out the way I'd like to have it turn out. But we got a good start on it. I'm working on piecemeal. I work on one and I work on the other, which is a little bit of a advice to anybody carving. Never start a project and finish that project, or try to finish that project without switching off and trying something different. Because what you find out when you carve, you will go into a certain spot too far or you'll make a mistake. And if you try to do too far at once, go, stop, go and stop, work around it till you see the, get your perspective and you know you're right on it. And then you'll be able to come out with a lot better project. Now this fellow here is Lincoln and I hope that he will come out looking, looking a lot like Mr. Lincoln does in this book I have. Now this book that I picked up was a, really a boon for pictures. It's got so many pictures in it of Lincoln that how, <laughs> for instance, everything you turn around has got a profile or a picture of him, which is basically what I need to do this. What people don't really realize with Abe Lincoln is Abe Lincoln got kicked in the face with a horse when he was a young kid. And this side of his face shows the injury and this side doesn't. He was actually killed by this horse and he come back to life. They, he was pronounced dead. And he come back to life to become our president. <laughs> but so you just can't carve one side of this and say, well, I'll carve it like this, but you can't. You have to work like on two faces. So you have to end up working with one face and then changing over and working on the other face because this has got to be a little different than this one. So I'm with the Wyoming Senior Center wood carving group over here, and uh, that's where we are today, Wyoming Senior. We meet every Wednesday afternoon, about 12 o'clock to about 3.30.